Hello Mountain Chums, we're back. Well that, uh, that's been a slightly strange period hasn't it? Obviously the first day back in the lakes after lockdown and it is light rain. Last time I was here was in March, it is now August 2020. Not having been on a hill for a little while, I thought it was probably good to start with a gentle one. So we're going up Grange Fell, which is just beside, as the name suggests, Grange. Wainwright liked this hill very much, but he said that there were two summits. We now consider that there are three. There is King's Howe, which is the first one, Brund Fell, and then there is Ether Knot. From Grange we begin by crossing over the River Derwent, which is not quite as high as it was yesterday because it's had a bit of a week of rain. We get to the road, turn right, here we go, gate off to the left, take care when crossing roads, I'm not your mother but you know. I loved Borrowdale and the hills in this little valley. Even though they're not the greatest in height, they have character and pretty good views. Talking about Grange Fell, he said, a most beautiful small climb. The first part to King's Howe is exquisitely lovely and simply must not be missed. Sacrifice any other walk if need be, but not this. I think we may have a decent enough day. It's probably a good start for legs not particularly accustomed to the hills again. When you reach this point there is a crossroads. If you turn left you'll go round back towards Troutdale Cottages and the lake. Well, as we're going to do, turn right over the fallen tree and back up through the woods. When I said this is not strictly the territory of fell walkers, perhaps, yet those who consistently hurry past Grange Fell to get to grips with the Scar Fells and Gable would do well to turn aside to it once in a while alone and quietly walk its sylvan glades and heathery top. The exercise will not tire the limbs, but it will do the heart and spirit and faith of the walker a power of good and gladden his eye exceedingly. I'm very much relying on the not tiring the limbs, but this is certainly a sylvan glade, I would say. There was always going to be uphill, wasn't there? I mean, that's really how you get up hills. Certainly not going to criticise the good people who put these steps here. But by heck, they're slippy. There's down water. Going through Long Moss, and I believe that's King Tower directly ahead of us. For possibly very obvious reasons, it doesn't feel like many people have been this way recently. And I've been here before, but not this route. But this is a lovely route. Not enormously climby, but it's a good welcome back to the fells.
come out of the trees and we are well rewarded with a cracking view. Derwent water, skidder with its little cap on, all the way over to Blencathra. Of the three summits of Grangefell, King's Howe is said to have the best view and I can certainly see why. I make that King's Howe, which is 292 metres, 1,286 feet. And from here, get an amazing view into the Borodale Valley, down over to Castle Crag, and up towards Honister Pass. Also down over into beautiful Dern Water Skidder, as ever hiding behind the clouds. And Keswick, just over here, is Brunfell, which is one of the other summits. It's a little higher than King's Hell. Wainwright thought it was the highest, he was wrong. Oops. The highest is Ether Knot, Ether Knot, which is behind where you are now, and we will come to that a little bit later. On y va. It may appear that night is drawing in, but it's not even midday yet. I feel we may have had the best of the day already. Finally the rain, the rain proper, never a massive fan of the rain. Okay, this is where we turn left and head up from Fell. Summit of many peaks, or a peak of many summits, depending on your preference. There you go, Run Fell in the oh, wind and rain. 415 meters, 1,363 feet, and over there is Ethan Knot, which is the real summit.
horizon. Mark Richards calls this Heather Knot, at least in one of his books. I don't know if that's a typo. The OS calls it Ether. So does Wainwright. So for now we're going to call it Ether Knot. Doesn't have the delightful mouthfeel of Joppel T. Howe. Not quite as bad as it looks. I think Castle Crag is steeper. I have to say, I can see why it might be called Heather Knot. It's amazing, it smells of honey. There is a path here, it's just not very well trodden. Ether knot, 419 metres, 1,375 feet, and the highest point of Grange Fell. But he's not bad either. Sunshine after the showers. I've heard tell that there are ways off to the north over Brown Dodd, but given the paths are a bit overgrown at the moment, I certainly can't see it. Which means that we have to go back the way we came, which is a bit of a slog, but due to the magic of cinema, we'll be done like that. Good news, we're on the path that goes past the two sheep pens, which means we are making good time on the way home. I liked King's Howe, but I don't think I need to climb it again today. over a fallen tree. I mean I'm calling it ours. I'm taking it on behalf of all of us. You're welcome. fell in all its very glorious glory. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are. If you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe and join us for another Wainwright walk sometime. Stay safe. I seem to remember Wainwright saying something about the exercise will not tire the limbs. 
yeah, the exercise will not tire the limbs, but it will do the heart and spirit and faith of the walker the power of good and gladden his eye exceedingly. I'm not arguing with the latter bit, but my limbs are definitely tired. Okay, well that's nearly it from me. We're going back through Kumakata Wood. Kumakata, Kumanacha. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry.